G'day! So a couple of months ago I made a video about building a battery pack for my RV out of a bunch of these cells. And the video went really well, which was great. But one thing that confused me a bit is, although I explicitly said in the video that I'd found that these had a round trip efficiency of 99%, I had a few comments saying that uh, I shouldn't use it for a solar application because the round trip efficiency of these is so poor. So I thought I'd do a quick video on a round trip efficiency test on one of these cells. So how I'm going to do that test is I'm going to discharge this cell with 10 amps down to 1.8 volts. Now when it reaches 1.8 volts I'll disconnect it and then hook it up to this and charge it with 10 amps up to 2.8 volts. And then when it reaches 1% of its charge current at 2.8 volts uh, which is 100 MA I'll connect this around the other way so the battery then discharges through this meter with, with 10 amps and then we'll read how many amp hours it's gone in and out, uh, charging and discharging. So although I'm a bit of a fanboy of watt hours as a power measurement, as an energy measurement, I'm gonna be doing it in amp hours because the battery voltage is relatively quite low and the, the losses that'll get through the wiring system will be enough to affect the result. Uh, I expect the coulombic efficiency, so I'm gonna be measuring the coulombic efficiency, is gonna be very close to the actual energy efficiency anyway because of the low internal resistance of these cells. So I'll quickly try and explain what coulombic efficiency is relative to actual efficiency. So a coulomb is basically a quantity of electrons and it's irrelevant what energy level those electrons are at, it's just a quantity of electrons and that's an amp hour. So a coulomb is one amp in one second so you put one amp into this battery for one second and you've added one coulomb to the battery. So if you were to compare, for example, I don't know, one of these cells versus a lead acid battery. So a lead acid battery's got a fairly high internal resistance, so you're going to be losing some charge on that. So say, for example, your battery's sitting at 13 volts, and you put a charger on it. Uh, I don't know, you charge it at 30 amps or something. Uh, it might jump up to 14 volts straight away. The battery charge is still the same, but the voltage is reading much higher. And then you might, say, for example, take the charger off and put a load on it, and it will drop from that 13 volts down to 12 volts. And... Although the charge is still the same in the battery, you've got this two volt loss between the charge and the discharge. And that two volts is, you know, you're looking at, I guess, 15% just straight away in that. So additionally, the lead acid battery will have some electrochemical processes going on where you're electrolyzing the water inside and generating hydrogen and oxygen. That takes up energy, Those that hydrogen and oxygen then gets reconverted back into water again inside the cell. So with these, the actual efficiency is gonna be quite close to the coulombic efficiency because the they don't have much sag, their internal resistance is very, very low. So if they're sitting at two and a half volts and you put a bunch of power on it, it'll stay at two and a half volts. Uh, and, and the same if you drain power from it, you know, it'll stay at two and a half volts and it will slowly creep down. So you're not gonna get this big sort of droop or boost in the battery voltage. So if you watched the video last time, you remember I went on about this thing and how terrible it was. Uh, it is bad, don't buy one. I found a new one, I bought a new one, which is this one. I assume most of the ones like this with two knobs, a coarse and a fine knob, and a single button are gonna be very similar. I'll link this one below because, you know, it's I, I find it useful to be able to find a, a bit of equipment that you can just buy and, and it will work as you like. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I mean, it's got shitty little connectors on here, but the thing actually seems to work a lot better than that thing. Much more reliable and it's really usable as a battery measurement device. So with this watt meter that I've bought, I've had to throw extra wires on it, and I've done that so that there's no power being used off the battery to power the circuitry in here. The voltage of these batteries is too low anyway to run the circuitry. Okay, let's make a start. So yeah, I'll get into discharging this and uh, we'll go from there. So I've got this power supply now set up. It was set at 2.8 volts maximum, 10 amps constant current charge, and it will run through here. So when I see this current go down to about 100 MA, I'll pull it off charge and we'll read the current. Okay, so we're down about one and a half percent charge. That's enough for me. I can't be bothered waiting to one percent. So now I'll just rewire this, take this away, put the load in, 
and we'll drain it and see how much we get. We've got, if we look over here, we've got here 41.4 amp hours to charge. So now this is wired to discharge the battery through the wattmeter into the load. Okay, so we're right at the end of the discharge, 1835. You can see how quickly it's dropping at the moment. So as soon as it hits 1.8, I'll hit the stop button and then we'll measure over here how many amp hours have come out of the battery. Okay, so if we take a close up at the meter, I'm oh, we'll just trying to focus you. Okay, time elapsed four hours ten minutes and 41.358 amp hours. Okay, so that's 41.358 divided by 41.4 times 100 gives us 99.9% .9 efficiency. Okay, so that shows a 99.9% .9 coulombic efficiency for that charge discharge situation for these cells uh, hopefully that dispels some myths about them like you know i think that myth is sort of rampant around the community that lto cells have got really bad round trip efficiency so that was at a 10 amp charge and discharge rate which works out about 0.25 c for each cell with my battery pack that works out at just over two kilowatts charge and discharge which is i think perfectly good real world situation increasing the charge discharge rate is likely to decrease the coulombic efficiency but the reality is, is that is good real world rates and the coulombic efficiency will discharge with any chemistry when you increase that rate. Uh, just the difference is that most chemistries won't handle a significantly high charge and discharge rate. Not as high as these things anyway. So anyway, hopefully that cleared some things up. I'm going to try and clear up other misinformation that I see around YouTube with to do with batteries and charging and power supplies and solar systems as well. So uh, yeah, tune in for that. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.